Welcome to Vitality Made Simple. This is the podcast that equips you to feel better, look better, and to enjoy better relationships. You know, life's all about relationships. And we're going to learn about health today that impacts relationships from an absolute world expert, Dr. Terry Walls. Welcome, Dr. Walls. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It is a pure joy because when I think of you, I think of three words. I think of courage, I think of curiosity, and I think of generosity. And I think our leaders will absolutely agree with me by the end of this conversation. Um, Dr. Walls was, is a, a medical doctor. She's a clinical professor at uh, in University of Iowa. She's been part of over 60 different peer-reviewed papers. Uh, she has done amazing things. And she is, was diagnosed uh, early in her medical career with multiple scler sclerosis. But I want you to know this is about autoimmunity. This is about all these chronic inflammatory diseases mm -hmm. that people are suffering from that are escalating. I feel like we have a tsunami of autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Walls, you're the expert. Tell, tell our listeners about your uh, initial diagnosis, what it did and how you yeah. really, it's how your, um, disaster has created a totally uh, change in your, in your change a lot. Yeah. Freedom. So, you know, during medical school, I started having uh, bouts of, a, of a twinges of pain at my temple, either on my left or my right side. Uh, it, uh, worse with stress uh, and, you know, gradually more troublesome, more troublesome. So I had a 20 years of this face pain getting to be uh, more severe. Then I developed leg weakness. Uh, uh, if I walked or tried to uh, jog a long time. Uh, uh, and I was age 45, went in, uh, saw the neurologist, I uh, got the MRIs of the brain, the spinal cord, and a spinal tap. And he said, you know, 13 years ago, you had an episode of dim vision uh, while out running. Uh, and uh, I think that was optic neuritis, and what you have is relapsing and remitting multiple sclerosis. So age 45, I go see uh, the best MS center in the country, I see their best physician take the newest drugs. Three years later, um, I am diagnosed with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. I, and uh, then I'm uh, put on uh, Novantro in a form of chemotherapy, uh, then Tizabri. Uh, and, you know, I'm thrilled to take these very toxic drugs because it's like, I, you know, my hands still work and, you know, I can feed myself, wipe my own butt, even though I'm in a tilt reclined wheelchair. Uh, and it's getting progressively more difficult to sit up. Uh, uh, um, my Tizabri doesn't work either. Then I'm switched to Celsept, a, a form of um, a transplant drug. Uh, and that's when I go back to, am I really doing all that I can? Uh, so I start going to pubmed.gov every night and, and searching. Uh, because now I know how bad it's going to be. You know, uh, it's really terrible. Uh, and I start reading the animal models of neurodegeneration, uh, and I decide that mitochondrial dysfunction is what drives disability. So I ultimately uh, create a supplement cocktail based on all these mouse studies uh, uh, focused on my mitochondria. Uh, then I uh, discover a study using electrical stimulation of muscles in people who are paralyzed, who are never going to walk, um, but it uh, improves their quality of life. Uh, and so I, I convinced my physical therapist to give me a test session. It hurts bad. <laughs> but when it's over, I feel really great. You know, uh, and my uh, physical therapist says, you know, Terry, this is probably uh, the endorphins. Uh, and so I you know, go to uh, his clinic every day for two weeks and uh, get my uh, electrical stimulation. Then he gets me a home going device. And um, now I, and, you know, I'm so weak, I can do a little tiny 10 minute workout before going to work. You know, I'm in this zero gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose while I'm staffing clinic uh, for the residents. And at home, uh, that's uh, what I'm in, is that zero gravity chair. I um, add uh, the electrical stimulation um, to my workout and I can do this little tiny 10 minute mat exercise. Um, then I discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine. And I take their course on neuroprotection. I have a longer list of supplements, which I'm for my mitochondria and I'm happy to take those. Then I have this really big aha, and Debbie, I laugh now how long it took me to have this aha. Um, what if I redesigned the paleo diet that I'd already been on for five years based on this long list of supplements? Because, you know, there's probably more things in the food 
uh, then if I can figure out where they, these ingredients are in the food supply. So that's a few more months of research. Uh, the Linus Pauling Institute of Micronutrients, by the way, was uh, my source. And so I have a, now a, a restructured paleo diet um, that emphasizes what to eat just as much as what to not eat. I start this new way of eating uh, December 26th of 2007. You know the day, Dr. I know Wall. the day. I know the day. And I remember, you know, um, <clears throat> giving Jackie the shopping list of, you know, what she had to get when she went grocery shopping and uh, we, we started this meal. Now, at that point, I'm so weak, I cannot sit up. I can take a couple of steps with two walking sticks. Um, we're having conversations about are we going to have to remodel the house to bring uh, a, a scooter inside because I, I, my mobility is just continuing to decline. My trigeminal neurology is definitely uh, worse. I'm beginning to have brain fog. So it's clear to me as I look at the trajectory of all of my neurologic symptoms, I'm going, I'm on a track to become bedridden by my illness, probably demented by my illness, and probably have the trigeminal neuralgia turn permanently on and die in with intractable pain. This is a terrible future. So I'm doing all of this stuff, not to get better because I know with secondary progressive MS, functions do not improve, they just get worse. Uh, and you're just trying to slow it down. So I, <clears throat> and my boss had uh, reassigned me to the traumatic brain injury clinic, which I have to start in January without residence. And she described the job, my wife and I knew like there was no way I could actually physically do that job. I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll go and either I can do it or I can't and then I finally have to apply for disability. So January comes and the first two weeks, uh, I just get to watch my new partners. The third week of January, um, I have to start seeing the patients uh, on my own. Uh, and so Monday night when I come home, I, I tell Jackie, you know, uh, that wasn't too bad. It was okay. And then on Friday night, so I've done this all week. On Friday night, I say, honey, I, I think I can do this. And by the way, uh, could we move? Um, I, I want to sit in a regular chair for supper. Which I hadn't done in years. So we I, I'm just off my chair. I should have put some Kleenexes out here. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so um, I, I set up for supper. And I have supper with my family. Uh, and then um, when I see the physical therapist, he says, you know, Terry, you're, you're stronger. Let's have you do 10 minutes twice a day for your exercises. And now if that goes okay, why don't you go up to 15 minutes twice a day, then 20 minutes twice a day, then 30 minutes twice a day. Uh, and then he asked me to start walking more and more with my walking sticks. And I start walking in the hospital <clears throat> with two walking sticks, stunning my, my partners who hadn't seen me walking around in four years. And then I'm uh, walking without uh, walk, uh, walking sticks. And then uh, I think it's uh, April, I, I tell Jackie, I really want to try riding my bike. Uh, she says, well, you know, if things keep going well, maybe in the fall. Well, two weeks later, I really want to try riding my bike. It's Mother's Day. And uh, we have this emergency family meeting. And Jackie uh, tells my 16 year old son, Zach, six foot five, big strapping lad, you run alongside on the left. And she tells my daughter, Zebby, who's 13, you run alongside on the right and she'll follow. We all get into position. I get on my bike and says, okay, coast is clear. And I get on the bike and I, I, I ride around the block, you know, and that big 60 year old boy, he's crying. The 13 year old girl, uh, she's crying, Jackie's crying. And of course, you can tell as I relive that moment, oh, tears yeah. come back and I'm crying. Yeah. Because w when you have a, a progressive neurologic disorder, you let go of the future. You, to uh -huh. cope, you just take each day as it unfolds. And even though I had, I was remarkably better. I was still just taking each day as it unfolded. It wasn't until I got on that bike that I was like, God, how, what, what's possible? How close to normal could I could I get? I, and so I biked a little bit more every day. And then in October, Jackie signs me up 
comes home and says, honey, I've signed us up for the courage ride. It's 18.5 miles. And honey, however, you, however far you go will be a triumph. Well, I crossed that finish line. And once again, we, we're all cried. And this fundamentally changes uh, how I think about disease and health. It changes the way I practice medicine. And it changes ultimately the focus of my research. And my mission in life is to teach other clinicians how to do uh, what I do and to um, teach the public that even if your physicians say, there's nothing more I can do, there's always a lot that you can do that will make a huge difference. Well, and you do such a beautiful job of bringing relationships into it, Terry, because um, you talk about how this lifestyle plan is a family intervention. It's absolutely. And I really appreciate that because it's all about relationships. I mean, um, you, you make sure that people answer the question, why do you want to have your health? So please, please expand on well, that. It, you know, I, I created a, a behavior change model, uh, which we call the Walls behavior change which incorporates what I learned uh, from my own journey, uh, our research. And when we created a therapeutic lifestyle clinic at the VA, uh, I got to work with health, uh, health psychologists as well. My, my psychology colleagues and my vets taught me that the most important classes that we had uh, with them, the most impactful was, um, what is your why? Why do you want to go on this journey? Because we will endure incredible things, incredibly difficult things when we have a reason. Otherwise, we want comfort and mm -hmm. pleasure in activity. Our, our brains are wired to seek those things. But, you know, if, if uh, my house was on fire, you know, smoke's right out of the windows, uh, flames out of the roof, and my daughter or my wife were in the house, I'd run barefoot over broken glass to save them. And um, so when I paint that scenario for people and I say, okay, it, you, your house is getting to burn, there's some smoke rolling out. Is there someone or something you care so deeply about that you would run in without thinking? Over barefoot over broken glass. Uh, and it, it's a spouse, it's children, it's grandchildren. Yeah. Occasionally it's a cat relationships. Or dog. Mm -hmm. Occasionally it's a cat or dog, and that's fine. If it's no one or nothing, then I have to send them to uh, talk therapy to find meaning and purpose in their life. Because um, I'll, I'll, unless we have a reason, we are biologically unable to endure discomfort voluntarily. Biologically, we will stop. We will avoid that. We'll relieve the pain and the discomfort. But if we have a reason we can endure immense pain once we have a reason. I, I totally agree. I, my brother and I talk a lot about how people move to lesser pain, and that's exactly what mm -hmm. you're talking about. So they have to define what they want so that they can define lesser pain. Right. You know, w once we get people uh, to identify, um, and, and we'll say, um, it, my grandchildren. I'd, I'd go save my grandchildren. Uh, now we can have a conversation. So what would you like to be doing with your grandchildren that you can't do now? If your health could moderately improve, what would you get to do? And like, well, I'd like to take my grandchildren to the water parks again. Okay. Uh, and now we have a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Day at the water parks. Now the next thing is, okay, so now we have to break it down into smaller, smaller incremental goals on the journey towards uh, the water park. And so maybe the next tiny little incremental goal is you're going to ask for a physical therapy consult so you can begin an exercise program. Um, and, and so we will, and, and I'll talk to, um, to my patients sort of in the big domain of self care. Where do you want to start first? Is it exercise? Is it uh, nutrition? Is it better sleep, uh, uh, better uh, relationships and social connectedness? So I, in general, uh, 
uh, people are more successful if you do one domain at a time. Mm. Uh, and I let them pick the domain. We, we, everyone knows that I care deeply about nutrition. They, they assume I'm going to force them all to do nutrition first and say, well, nutrition is prof very profound. It's very helpful, but it's your life. You get to choose. What's the domain you want to work on? Oh, that, that's so great. You know, you are the first person that I've ever known to give hope to uh, autoimmunity, to multiple sclerosis specifically. Um, it pretty much had seemed like before that when someone say, you know, on a walker, in a wheelchair, whatever the progression is, that's where they are. And the goal is to stay there. So you didn't have a, a role model in this, Terry. Oh, you know, um, I, I did not. Uh, when I was first diagnosed, I went to PubMed, started reading the literature, got very agitated and upset because, you know, I saw that the progressive nature of the disease. That's when my wife said, okay, you got to stop reading. I'll find the best MS clinic in the country. We'll go there, let them take care of you. And so I did that for four years and now I'm in the wheelchair and it's very clear to me I'm definitely on the track to progression and, and a really terrible outcome. Uh, and that's when I start reading and, and doing all that I can. So I moved from learned helplessness, it's not my job, it's the job of the physicians, to, okay, I'll follow the physicians, but I have to be doing my job too, which is, am I doing everything that I can? So I could start uh, doing my research. Now, I was doing all of that, Debbie, in an attempt to slow the decline, mm -hmm. the possibility of recovery. Right. Uh, I mean, I knew it just did not happen when you're in the progressive phase of the illness, that there was no recovery. I was taking drugs uh, with, um, in the package insert, 2% risk of acute leukemia every time I took the drug. But I was thrilled to take those drugs because, you know, using my hands was incredibly valuable. And so I uh, being able to see was incredibly valuable. It's like, okay, I was going to, I was more afraid of worsening disability than of the uh, uh, toxicities from the drugs. I am remarkably better before I can see that, you know, recovery might be possible. We don't know, you know, how close to normal I could get. And my kids laugh like, mom, you'll never be normal. I said, yes, I know. You don't want to be normal, Terry. Yes, no. That, that, my wife not certainly that doesn't want me to in this world. be normal. You want to be optimal. So, yeah, I want to be optimal. And then what I discovered was, you know, restoring function absolutely is possible. Uh, and then in the internet, you know, people just can't comprehend that progressive MS could reverse from such profound disability. So they, they there are so many people saying, well, Walls clearly didn't have uh, MS. Her physicians were incompetent. She had some other disease. And I'm like, well, okay. So let's say maybe maybe they were incompetent. Now we can go back and look at my research where we have prospective trials of others with progressive MS with a neurologist who confirmed that they had progressive MS. We did her intervention, they could do it. We markedly reduced fatigue improved uh, cognition, reduced anxiety, reduced depression, and in half, improved their ability to walk in progressive multiple sclerosis. Then we, I, I couldn't get any more funding to do uh, progressive MS studies that were multimodal. So then we started doing uh, diet studies uh, and we've published uh, multiple studies there. We're on our eighth study it, and we have, uh, we're up to 70 peer reviewed published scientific papers about, you know, uh, nutrition, diet, multiple sclerosis. So fine, discount my story if you want. Um, but we have peer reviewed scientific uh, research validating uh, uh, the interventions I use. And we have in my clinical practice and in my clinical tribe, we have others with progressive MS who have had remarkable improvement. Uh, there's a, a, a lovely woman, uh, Josie, like me, progressive MS, um, for, like me, in a really terrible place. She was further along. She was wheelchair dependent. She could stand for a, a second or two to transfer to a toilet with assistance, stand, with assistance to transfer to bed. 
but now she had a model like you know mm -hmm. things could improve she, she had worked hope. her she had hope she was willing to do the work and she worked incredibly hard three years later she you know that and her progress was letting us know i could i can stand I could stand for 30 seconds. I could stand for a minute. I could stand for a minute and a half. I took one step. I took two steps. I took 10 steps. I am walking with a walker. Now that's three years. It was um, hard work, but she's walking with a walker. And this was a person who required assistance to transfer to a toilet, assistance to transfer to bed. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, it's certainly possible to um, improve function, restore function. Uh, the older you are, it's gonna it's gonna be harder. Um, uh, absolutely, the sooner you understand the principles and get on uh, these changes, um, the easier it is to prevent the decline and to re get closer and closer to normal. And and by the way, this morning, um, I, I should tell your listeners, I got up. Uh, did my morning meditation, and then I jogged in my treadmill. Then I uh, did my sauna. Then I did my cold shower, and then I uh, came to you. I have to tell our listeners. Um, I, I love to watch Dr. Wall's Instagram because she does what's called hormesis. We're going to talk about that. But so it was crazy cold day in Oklahoma. I can't imagine how cold it was in Iowa. She goes out in her swimsuit and rolls in the snow. And yeah, and, that was so, so much fun. I wanted to say, you are such a badass. And then I was afraid I, I didn't know her yet that I would offend her. But that's an ultimate compliment from my standpoint and what you were doing. Tell us about, um, you know, your morning routine and how hormesis yeah. is part of that and what hormesis is. So hormesis is uh, intentionally giving your body mild to moderate stress. And then a period from which you can recover from that mild to moderate stress. And we can do that uh, with temperature. So saunas uh, are a great way. You're using heat temperature. You can do it with a, a hot bath. Uh, you can do it with a cold shower, uh, an ice bath. Uh, and so that's a ice bath, folks, not uh, not nice bath. She's saying ice bath. Correct? Ice baths. So you, you, you take <laughs> you, you dump all of the ice from your uh, freezer. Uh, ice cube trays uh, in, uh, and so it's really nice and cold. And what this does uh, is uh, really uh, invigorate your mitochondria. Uh, it's a potent anti-aging uh, strategy. It's a potent uh, youthening strategy. Uh, so you can do it with temperature. You can do it with high intensity exercise. You could do it with uh, strength training. You can do it with spices. You can do it with fasting, not eating. Uh, the, the key principle is mild to moderate stress, followed by a recovery period so you can fully recover from that stress. Um, and the um, Instagram video that uh, Debbie's talking about is, so I've been in the uh, near-infrared sauna, so red light sauna, uh, sweat's pouring off me. I've been in there for about an hour. And I, and I had uh, communicated with Zeb. Uh, that we're going to time my coming out of the sauna and then uh, going out to roll in the snow. And uh, it was well below zero here, so it was quite cold. Uh, you, you go out and uh, it, the steam is rolling off me uh, as I go in. I'm wearing my old swimsuit, so it's sort of baggy and people are laughing at me for wearing this baggy swimsuit. Uh, then I uh, you know, run, uh, go down the stairs, run under the snow, uh, lay in the snow, making snow angels. And you know, again, the steam is just rolling off. It was, uh, that was so much fun. And you sort of hear me, hear me going, woo, woo. Yeah, I was saying that watching you. <laughs> amazing, just amazing. So the concept of hermesis is absolutely fascinating and something that people can start, start small with, correct? Right. So uh, if you have multiple sclerosis, uh, well, actually, I should say all of us, because mm -hmm. we have air conditioning and heating, we tend to live in this very narrow, comfort comfortable range, 68 to 72 degrees. Uh, and uh, so that's sort of like putting us to bed rest. It's destroying some of our resilience by living in this narrow temperature range. If you're 
temperature, core temperature goes up uh, if you have some demyelination, so autoimmune disease affecting your brain, your symptom severity will increase. Uh, and so I, I tell my, my tribe, hormesis is good, but you're going to have to go very slowly. If um, you're uh, dabbling in temperature, hot or cold, increases your symptoms, you made too big of a challenge. So then you have to have a smaller challenge. So it might be that in your shower, you start with your warm shower that you like, and then at the end, you turn off the warm and you have a little bit of cold at the end. And so you can maybe tolerate that four or five seconds, then maybe 10 seconds, then maybe 15 seconds, and then just very slowly, gradually increase the length of the cold shower. If you do baths, you can start with, okay, here's the temperature that I'm normally at. So I'm going to try it just a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. So you just want to take your time to gradually expand. Or you might decide, oh, temperature sounds too scary. So I think I'll do, do this with food. So instead of eating throughout the day, I'm going to have just three meals. Uh, and then maybe over time, I'll go from three meals, work my way down to two meals. And then I might make my two meals a little closer together. And so I have a longer period of not eating. Um, so I go 12 hours not eating. I go 14 hours not eating. I go 15 hours not eating. I go 16 hours not eating. And then if you want to be really bold, maybe you'll go 24 hours not eating sometimes. Uh, and all of these things, again, are mild to moderate stress. We want you to do it at a pace that is comfortable and manageable. I really appreciate that. The um, part, you know, part of, uh, well, let me start over there. I'll, I'll edit that out. Um, as I learned in my functional medicine training, gut health is always a part or gut dysbiosis is always a part of autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. So one thing I really appreciated hearing in your lecture um, in December at the World Congress was um, about how you observe poop and how people can <laughs> observe their own bowel movements to to make those mid-course changes. So I've yeah. always told my patients, we look at the Bristol stool chart, but you, you have a better way of looking at that. Tell us about your method. Well, you know, I'm a farm kid. Uh, and so we had to deal with poop, uh, all sorts of poop from a variety of uh, creatures. And we realized that if you put the poop on the soil, it really uh, uh, improves the health of the soil. Uh, so I've had this long understanding that Poop uh, has a huge impact uh, on health. When I talked to my patient at the VA and we created the Therapeutic Lifestyle Clinic, I couldn't do any fancy functional medicine testing. Um, so we could talk about behavior change. We could talk a lot about poop. Uh, and so my, my vets uh, and I uh, really enjoyed, uh, are you pooping rocks, logs, prickly logs that sort of hurt on the way out or smooth logs that are easy, snakes, pudding, or tea. You know, putting in tea, you have too much inflammation in your gut, we need to back down the fiber. Rocks, you don't have enough fiber, so we need more fiber uh, and more fermented foods. Um, snakes are ideal, but if snakes are getting into your pants, that's not acceptable, so then we, again, would back off on the fiber. And, and everyone gets that, you know, rocks, logs, putting tea or coffee, you know, that's easy to understand, easy to describe, and uh, we all know that we want the poop in the toilet, not in our pants. And so that's a very straightforward conversation. And if you just incorporate that, you know, when you poop, look. Uh, and um, then it will be easier for you to know, do you need more fiber or less fiber? Do you need more fermented foods or less fermented foods? I, I love it. Keeping it simple is the key. And tell yes. us about generally your um, the walls protocol in terms of of food. So most of us are eating too much added sugar, too much uh, flour based uh, uh, products, breads, cereals, pastas. Uh, yeah, they're delicious. They're cheap. They're plentiful. 
what I created is a plan in a sequential fashion to improve your diet. So the first thing I want you to do is more vegetables. Uh, and so we talked, uh, and I didn't want people to be hungry. So, because you can't sustain being hungry. Mm -hmm. So we tried to fill them up with more vegetables uh, and uh, their protein source. Three cups of green leafy vegetables, three cups of uh, cabbage, onion, mushroom family vegetables, three cups of really brightly colored things, beets, carrots, berries. And then um, preferably meat, but I realize there are many people who are vegetarian for their deeply held uh, religious beliefs. Uh, and so we do have vegetarian plans, uh, but you need to have sufficient protein. The next level, level two uh, is really, uh, uh, in addition to all those vegetables uh, in the meat, um, then we talk about the benefits of organ meats, <clears throat> uh, fermented foods, and if you're eat, still eating nuts and seeds, that uh, soaking them uh, in germinating the nuts and seeds, it will decrease the reactivity. And then the next level uh, takes the carbs down further, and we make people ketogenic. Uh, and we talk about um, using uh, medium chain triglycerides or olive oil, uh, and then. Uh, we also have a version that uh, reduces uh, uh, lectins further by taking out nightshades uh, and reducing uh, nuts and seeds and reducing uh, seed spices. The, the key is that I want people to improve their diet as a family at a pace uh, that they uh, are, are okay doing. And I, we have a framework to guide them sort of step by step and a framework for when an elimination diet uh, is warranted. I, if you make the diet too restrictive at step one, it's overwhelming, just mm -hmm. completely overwhelming. Just doing the walls level one leads to dramatic improvements in health for the majority of folks. Uh, and, and I would say 70% of our vets uh, uh, with uh, walls level one or walls level two had just a dramatic improvement uh, in their symptoms. No, it's so great how you give people choices because um, I think when uh, you always speak to the point that biology is not one single pathway. So, so it's not just one food and it's not just food. It's also like you, like hormesis and sleep and stress management. But when it yeah. gets to be uh, one way, then the stress level goes up, correct? Right. You know, if, if we are um, focused uh, too rigidly on it has to be this way, I, I, and I, you know, I tell my followers, if you ever see someone who says this is the way to health and the only way to health or the best way to health, stop following them. Mm -hmm. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, our, our genetic ancestry, we, we originate in as equatorial Africa. Our species migrate uh, eventually all over the globe. We thrive and have reproductive success in a wide variety of ecosystems, in deserts, in grasslands, in forests, in the tropics, up to the Arctics. Humans are incredibly adaptable. So there will be many paths to uh, better health. Uh, and we know uh, the paths to worse health is the Western diet. Uh, in sedentary uh, and loneliness. So we, we know paths to destroying our health. Uh, there are many paths to restoring your health. So true. And, and, I, and I want to emphasize that the WALS protocol is beneficial for all types of autoimmunity and even mm -hmm. people who are not experiencing autoimmunity. Uh, the most recent thing I read is that uh, there's there are maybe 60 to 80 million people in the United States with some level of autoimmunity. It's, yes. it's you know, obviously a spectrum. Um, what are you seeing? What success are you seeing with your protocol in other chronic inflammatory diseases? So um, it, when you have autoimmunity, there are all these autoimmune processes are, are happening, overactive innate immune system, overactive adaptive uh, antibody driven uh, immune processes. Uh, by implementing a better diet and these self-care routines, we're quieting the innate immune system, the adaptive immune system. And we're, what we're seeing is across many 
uh, diagnosed autoimmune problems, whether it's lupus, inflammatory bowel disease, RA, psoriasis, Hashimoto's, MS, uh, quality of life improves, uh, mental clarity improves, uh, pain reduces. Uh, uh, we see people with anxiety, depression, their uh, anxiety declines, uh, irritability, depression declines. Uh, worse. And then um, I, I think you alluded to this. Uh, we have tens of millions of people who don't have a clear diagnosis of an autoimmune disease. They may have pain, they may have uh, uh, anxiety, irritability. Uh, if they're a female, and, if, and many of <clears throat> there's a greater preponderance of uh, women in autoimmunity, we're more likely to have pelvic pain, endometriosis, uh, to have difficulty getting pregnant, difficulty uh, conceiving, uh, uh, more likely to have migraines, more likely to have uh, uh, chronic tension headaches, more likely to have pain somewhere in our body that's not responding well. You're told you have tenosynovitis, tendonitis, you're taking all sorts of anti-inflammatories, uh, and you're still having pain. These are autoimmune prodromes. And it's these people who are frustrated they don't have a diagnosis. And my response is, well, hallelujah, you're early, you're in the prodrome state. You will respond more quickly, more completely to diet and lifestyle interventions. So um, yes, you can keep working on finding a diagnosis, but even more important is working on improving your diet and self-care so you never have to get a diagnosis. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely. And, you know, that's hope. I mean, if people, if people can get out of the mindset that um, disease is some kind of, well, I always say it's a pooping bird. They sort of think they're walking along and something just falls on them and, oh, now I'm, now I've got this diagnosis and they accept it so wholeheartedly. Um, then, then they're just on the road to decline. And, they're on the you know, road to learned helplessness. They're on the learned road to say, helplessness. I have no role in my health journey. And my position is don't uh, hold on to learned helplessness. Yes, see your physicians, take the prescriptions that are offered and recommended according to what feels right to you, but always hang on to what's my role in my health journey? What can I be doing? And, and I, I want to make the observation that I have people who have um, uh, bad diagnoses, Huntington's, terrible diagnosis. You're, you're going to die. You're going to get demented, terrible future. However, what my Huntington's patients have taught me is if you implement better diet and self-care, you have better function. For clarity, listeners, Huntington's is a, it's a purely genetic disease. So it's a genetic disease. And then we have people with muscular dis dystrophy and cystic fibrosis, more purely genetic diseases that are progress, you know, that you have a progressive accumulation of health problems related to those diseases. Uh, I've had followers who have those diseases reach out to me to say, you know, my doctors didn't have anything else that they could do for me. We discovered your work, implemented your program. Uh, and yep, I still have muscular dystrophy. I still have cystic fibrosis, but I am doing so much better. What, what I want all of you to understand is the standard westernized diet, the standard westernized lifestyle of inactivity and comfort uh, lead to health declines. If you improve your nutrition, improve your self-care routine, you can have a better functioning body uh, and you'll have a higher quality of life. Even if you have a genetic disorder, that means you can't have a quote, normal life. Why not have the best life that is possible for somebody with that genetic disorder? And that's what better nutrition, better exercise, uh, uh, better sleep and stress reduction will do for you. Well, and having something to look forward to, just like your bike ride. I mean, oh, yeah, to have I that know. goal ahead of you. Well, uh, in my work, Terry, I, I, I see physician referrals, a lot of autoimmunity, and I typically test the oral microbiome as well as uh, the gut microbiome via GI map. Uh, I, yeah, use, yeah. I use oral DNA for uh, my clinical testing. And what I find pretty much across the board is um, high fusobacterium nucleatum, an oral bacteria that translocates to the gut. And a relatively easy 
bacteria to deal with. It's a commensal, which means that uh, mm. for listeners, it, it can be um, a good a good bacteria at low levels, but it when it overgrows, it gets it gets bad. So tell us, Doctor Walls, what role uh, infections play in autoimmunity? Well, we know that in order for my uh, the chemistry of my life to be optimal. Um, I have to have the right bacteria uh, to help run the chemistry of life. Uh, they digest the food that I'm eating, uh, make more compounds that get into my bloodstream uh, and are, are central to good health. If I have the wrong mix of bacteria, an unhealthy community, because I eat sugar, uh, too many carbs, too many processed foods, my health uh, markedly declines. Uh, uh, early in my research career, we were doing basically what looks a lot like the GI map uh, uh, on a research basis. Now we have switched to doing what looks a lot more like uh, the oral health test that you're describing, and we're using artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, we'll be presenting this data that uh, 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 and the data that we're going to be presenting is based on the stool analyses that we can based on your baseline stool, predict will you respond well or better to a low saturated fat diet or better to uh, the walls elimination diet. Uh, and I think there'll be a time when people come to see you or me uh, and they have their autoimmune challenge that we could do a um, oral test uh, and if the patient's open to it, a poop test, see who's growing in their uh, microbiome in the mouth and in the poop. And then say, okay, based on this, you're going to do a whole lot better on a ketogenic diet. Based on this, you'll do better on a Mediterranean diet. Based on this, you'll do better on intermittent fasting. You'll do better on uh, it, maybe even a carnivore diet. Um, we're not there yet. Will we, will we be there in 10 years, 15 years? Uh, I, I certainly expect so. Uh, I, um, you know, we're doing a study now comparing a ketogenic diet a paleo diet, an usual diet, we'll be analyzing the uh, salivary microbiome. And so again, and that's at the end of that study, we'll be able to say based on the microbiome that's in the mouth, we'll be able to predict that you would have done better on the keto diet, better on the paleo diet. Um, I, uh, it's, it's so exciting because how diet improves our health probably goes through the microbiome. And you have to have the right microbiome partners to get the maximal health. And so maybe what we'll end up someday doing is checking your microbiome. We'll know which diet is best for you. And maybe I'll even say, and now we have to replenish your microbiome with more fermented foods or a, a supplemental uh, probiotic uh, while you take this new diet. Uh, I, uh, I think, you know, that's why I love doing research. You, you, you learn stuff. Now you have new ideas that you want to test. It, it's um, so exciting. It's so exciting. And from my standpoint, I, I, I dig through the research and, uh, and find, and then I see the clinical patients that I can sort of match to that. And then the physicians have improved outcomes because we, you know, are looking at yeah, the microbiome. Yeah, it's all just working together. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. It's so exciting. So, so tell us um, about your therapeutic lifestyle clinic. As I mentioned earlier, I know our listeners know, obviously, you're curious. They know you're courageous. Yeah. And you're very generous with what you give away on your, um, on your website. So tell yeah. us about your offerings there. So uh, the VA was so impressed with uh, what I was doing clinically in the traumatic brain injury clinic in the primary care clinic. They pulled me out uh, of those two clinics. We created a new clinic, the therapeutic lifestyle clinic. And I saw, I, I went to the pain clinic uh, to specialty medicine and medicine and said, give me your sickest people that you can't help uh, and I'll take care of them. I'm not, and it's going to be diet and lifestyle. Uh, you'll keep managing their drugs. I'm not giving new drugs. I'm just doing diet and lifestyle. And we had, we had dramatic success. Uh, people who are severely disabled, uh, people who are on 20 to 30 drugs, <clears throat> you know, uh, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, anxiety, depression, uh, bipolar, uh, PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, uh, multiple diagnoses. Uh, and 
what we're able to show is blood pressure improving, blood sugar improving, uh, weight coming down, uh, the number of prescriptions uh, that were required uh, coming down. My VA central office came out to see uh, what I was doing. They were very impressed. They incorporated many of those concepts into their clinic called the Whole Health Clinic. Marvelous, marvelous stuff. Uh, and then um, I uh, decided to retire from the VA uh, so I could uh, run my clinical trials at the university and I could teach clinicians uh, around the world what I'm doing uh, and I could teach the public uh, what I'm doing. So uh, there are several things I want your listeners to be aware of. If you are a practitioner, uh, so a, a dentist, physician, chiropractor, a movement professional, a uh, mental health professional, a nutrition professional, if you have a health related license of some type or certification, go to terrywalls.com forward slash certification and you can learn more about that. You could use the code VIP to get a discounted application fee and would would love to get you involved because people we have more people wanting to come see me, but um, yeah, that I, I can't see everyone. So I need more people I need to train more people so they can see you. Uh, and then for the public, uh, yeah, just go to turnwalls.com. We have a bunch of um, uh, offerings uh, there. Uh, um, uh, the electrical stimulation course, people uh, like a whole lot. Um, we have, uh, you just be sure to get on my email list because we have free webinars uh, all the time that you can sign up for and be part of. Um, we have a uh, course on MS guts. We have a course on uh, uh, MS hormones. Uh, and, you know, depending on what my public is telling me, then I develop new courses. Uh, and uh, we uh, host a summit, the MS and Neuroimmune Summit. Uh, and we'll be doing that again this summer. So key, the first thing, go to terrywalls.com and sign up for the email. So uh, that's terrywalls.com forward slash email. So you can be notified about all the new wonderful stuff that we're doing. Oh, it, it's great. And be sure and join Dr. Walls on her Instagram. Um, she has robust content there that's super fun. And she's very transparent about what she's doing for her own yeah. vitality span. Um, and so I, I really appreciate that. You know, one more thing I, I should uh, tell people about uh, is our clinical trial. Yes. yes, uh, yes. So if you have relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, you know, be sure to go to terrawalls.com forward slash MS study. Uh, and uh, there's a big yellow box there. Uh, click that so you can take the survey to see, are you eligible to be in the study? And even if you're not eligible, you could be on our uh, patient uh, database for the future studies that we do, because we, we also do uh, survey based studies from uh, time to time as well. And that's great. Uh, it, yeah, so it's terrywalls.com forward slash MS study. It's a big study comparing a ketogenic diet, paleo diet to usual diet. If you're already following a therapeutic diet of some type, you can still be in the study. We just need you to be willing to be randomized. So, that, so if you're following a keto diet and you get randomized to the paleo diet, that you'll agree to like, okay, now you'll do the paleo diet. If you're on a Mediterranean diet, you have to be willing to be randomized so that if you're randomized to the keto, you'll do keto. If you're randomized to paleo, you'll do paleo. If you're randomized to usual diet, you get to keep doing what whatever diet it is that you're on now. No, it's terrific. Uh, there's really nothing to lose with your protocol. I mean, it's, it's inexpensive. Anybody's gonna feel better. Right, what there's to lose if you're overweight, most of our patients have lost weight without being hungry. Yeah. Yeah. You, you might uh, lose couch time because you might be out in bike Doing races stuff. and having adventures, hiking. You know, uh, one of the things that was uh, super f uh, fun in my uh, lifestyle clinic at the VA, the uh, gentleman would come in and this would usually happen between month three and month six, big, big smile on his face. Like, oh my God, doc, you didn't tell me, you know, my, my love life has come back. Uh, so they're very excited. Now, what, what is super interesting, because uh, the veterans could come with their spouses uh, to our uh, support groups, because, you know, this is um, a family intervention. So the men are all thrilled that um, uh, the erectile dysfunction has gone away uh, and they're having uh, more family relations is what they're usually uh, calling it. 
the ladies are in general, they're um, excited because they're losing weight without being hungry. Uh, but they too, if you ask them, well, they're having more family relations too. In, uh, so their love life has improved. And if you ask the men, they too have lost weight without being hungry. So, and this is a broad generalization. So uh, forgive me if I'm offending some people. <clears throat> the men are much more concerned about performance and the women were much more concerned about appearance. But, you know, for both, they're losing weight without being hungry. And for both, um, uh, uh, improvement in uh, uh, libido, uh, sexual desire, uh, um, and sexual performance. Uh, super fun. Super fun. And it just leads to a better example for the family, you know, to see the hope, to see a better see nutrition plan. See the hope, absolutely. Uh, and I, I cannot stress this enough. If you approach this as a family intervention and stress that, uh, health benefits will occur for the children, health benefits will occur for the spouse, uh, and that we want to make changes as a family at a pace that the family can manage. So have a conversation about what are the foods we're gonna, we want to add, what are the foods we want to reduce, diminish, or replace. Uh, and um, if that means you're going to have uh, gluten-free waffles to begin with, that's fine. Would I rather you have uh, uh, bacon and greens in the morning, maybe with sausages? Yep, I think that was a better, a better breakfast, but I want you to do things at a pace that you and your family can manage. Well, and when we see autoimmunity on the rise uh, among younger people, you, you know, I, I tell people it's, to start incorporating a more therapeutic lifestyle. I mean, a fun lifestyle, delicious lifestyle, but you don't know what you might avoid. You don't know what snake correct. doesn't bite you. And so you have to uh, talk uh, to your children, uh, talk, 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 explain why we want to be having vegetables, why we want to be having these good foods uh, uh, so that they can understand uh, and <clears throat> realize that, of course, away from home, your spouse is going to eat what they want. Your kids are going to eat what they want. Uh, you can only really control uh, what the messages are and what food is going to be plentiful in your home. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, Dr. Walls, I can't thank you enough for your curiosity, for your courage, and for your generosity. Um, at the time of this recording, I'll be on your webinar tonight. Uh, there's just all kinds of, of goodies that Dr. Walls offers. So folks, get on there. I will put all of that in the show notes uh, with easy links and easy addresses. Uh, in, in closing, uh, anything, Dr. Walls, that you would like to add? Just begin one step at a time and know that if I can recover and get back to a rich and full life, then there's certainly hope that you too can get back to a rich and full life. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you listeners for joining us today. Um, Vitality Made Simple is now in 119 countries and almost 4,000 cities. And that's because of you. I've been a, sort of a social media loser until last May 11th, but I'm changing that. I'm now on Instagram. So so join me there and join Dr. Walls on um, all of her media outlets. Your your family will, will thrive by incorporating the Walls protocol. Um, just thanks again. Blessings until next time.